Well, I decided to run an experiment with a center-fed full-wave dipole. So you can probably see that yellow bobbin section there, which is at the center of the two elements of the inverted V configuration. Now, a center-fed full-wave, there seems to be debate out there. Uh, there's even one engineering website that actually just says it, you know, it cannot radiate and it's just a worth, worthless antenna. But essentially that's untrue. It's only true if you try to feed it with coax and run a tuner at the station <laughs> because its impedance is essentially infinite. So, but to say that it, it just can't work is, is like saying that an N-fed half wave can't work. An N-fed half wave has near infinite impedance, but we use impedance matching to step up the voltage slash impedance to drive an N-fed half wave. So a center-fed full wave is essentially two N-fed half waves going in opposite directions and being fed out of phase, which just like with the normal half wave dipole means that the currents run in phase with each other. So when currents are running to the left on both elements, it's happening on both elements and then to the right on both elements. So the, the thing is, unlike a half wave dipole where the uh, current loop is towards the center, with this, it's like having two half-wave dipoles side by side. So you literally have two current loops halfway along each element. And, uh, and it actually exhibits gain when it's horizontal over a um, half-wave dipole. But anyway, so uh, to match it in, instead of using like a, uh, a typical transformer, I thought to myself, well, if it's pretty much infinite impedance at the antenna being a full wave on 40 meters, then what I would do is feed it with a section of a 450 ohm window line. So I've measured out a section of window line that is uh, a quarter wave, uh, taking into consideration a 91% velocity factor. So the window line section is 9.68 meters as a quarter wave for 40 meters. And then it connects directly to some coax, which then runs down to the station. So I figured instead of... Um actually uh, putting a uh, current ballon, like a one-to-one -one current ballon or something on the um, system, I felt that the quarter wave window line along with the antenna would balance things enough to be able to go straight to coax. Now, because it's a quarter wave section, which is a different impedance to the rest of the line, the 50 ohm line, it actually changes the high impedance of the antenna to a low impedance it basically inverts your impedance so um so that's brought me to a low impedance and although i haven't bothered trimming for perfection uh let's just say when i transmit i probably got like a two to one swr or 2.5 to one without the tuner but i'm happy to bring that in with the tuner uh, for now but uh it's actually working very very nicely she's pretty much up there isn't she so I'll try and show these elements. Don't know if that's going to show. It is an inverted V, but I do have the elements out quite high. It's very hard to see, I think. But uh, there you go. Now, interestingly enough, of course, since I didn't put a one-to-one uh, -one current balance on or any um, choke, um, you may assume that I'd be getting a lot of RF off the coax. Now, bearing in mind, uh, the station is actually this metal trailer. The coax is coming to the trailer. The trailer also happens to be, I'll just try and come in from this view. So I'm, I'm at the trailer now, and the trailer happens to be a halfway, pretty much in between the antenna. So it's not really imbalancing. If the trailer was off under one element, particularly more than the other, then it would throw things out um, somewhat. Uh, now, she's a good height above ground, a half wave. And as you can see, look at the meter here. I'm close to the coax, and I'm getting very, very little. I literally have to touch to draw uh, currents off this, watch. Touching it. Seriously, so that is um, really good. She's not uh, uh, throwing off RF on the coax shield, and neither is the trailer, or oh, a tiny bit. I'm nearly touching it there. It's probably because I'm coming through my body at uh, the position I'm in. Let's change position here. Yeah, so just a slight tickle, which is absolutely fantastic. So that's running five watts. 
and I'll probably show some uh, results on SDRs. But the band's a bit too good for the high high um, conditions are too good for the high bands at the moment. But uh, I will show some SDR results. Okay, it's about 20 past 5 p.m. local time now. I'll jump into Ararat. Conditions have now improved to uh, suitable for this band for that particular trip. The signal's looking good there. It's uh, very close to uh, S9 plus 10 dB by the looks of it. So that's doing nicely out to uh, our rat there. Now I'll just jump out of here. I'll see, um, I'll go into VK5, but first of all, I'll just show you the hourly hat chart. So I'll jump up there. And you can see now the, um, let's say uh, where I'd be looking for in South Australia might be uh, in the light green, dark green, sort of somewhere in between those two, which is, you know, eight to 10 megahertz. So it's getting closer for 40 meters for that distance and as you can see Ararat is probably you know past the in the brown side near the dark green and brown which is you know six to eight megahertz which is exactly where I am uh, in that range so now we'll jump across I'll quickly have a look so still not optimum for VK5 but it should be doing okay there now so let's hope I can get in here nice and easy So it looks like about an S8, S7. Oh yeah, came up to over an S8 there. So that's uh, pretty nice. Oh yeah, nearly an S9. So it's picking up out towards uh, VK5. I'll quickly jump up now. Um, up the east coast of Australia and actually before we do just a refresher on the hourly hat chart having a look there that I may be anywhere looking in the light green or the light blue which is the uh, 10 to 12 megahertz so where I'm about to check uh, is probably not optimum for 40 meters but it's certainly worth a try see if it's getting up there so this is in Hunter Valley, VK2, New South Wales. Oh yeah, so a good S8 there. So about an S7, bit of QSB there. Coming back up. Yeah, close to an S9 there. Beautiful. Yeah, so she's doing quite nicely all the way up uh, the east coast there into the Hunter Valley. So now I'll just venture further afield. Of course, it won't seem so impressive because I doubt that it's going to be doing very well all the way up to Brisbane in the current conditions but we'll just see if it's getting there at all so uh, come on Brisbane let us in so we're a little over an S5 sounds pretty noisy up there too so about an S5 up to Brisbane and just having another glance at that hat chart and Brisbane, look, I think that'd be somewhere between the uh, light blue and grey, that area, which is like between 12 and 14 megahertz optimum for that trip. So uh, there you go. Very interesting. Now I'll just jump down to Ararat in central West Victoria, which should be optimum. Whoops, right now. Um, I'll just go back and have a look here. Yeah, so Ararat would be in an ideal uh, position 
of uh, conditions from my location right now. So, 5 watts on the Centerfed full wave. How's she going? So an S9 Plus, looks like it's dropped a bit down from the S9 Plus 10. Which gives me the impression that it's about to actually pick up more in VK5 as it tends to sort of uh, drift across westward and later I should get into Western Australia as well. But uh, I'll jump back into VK5, see what we can do. See if I can get into one without a queue. So that looks like an S7. So it's probably yet to pick up, but very soon it should pick up in um, VK5. So there you go. Um, that's awesome. Well, there you go. A uh, full wave Centerfed dipole matched with a quarter wave of window line to bring the infinite impedance or near infinite impedance down to a low impedance. And don't believe everything you read on the web because, uh, like I said, some uh, even electronics engineering sites say that uh, a centerfed full wave cannot radiate, it cancels itself, blah, blah, blah. The real truth is it's a high impedance antenna and if you deal with that, you've got yourself an antenna with maybe up to 2 dB gain over a half wave dipole. And uh, you can check that on Wikipedia. Um, 7.3 and thanks for watching. Just after 6.23 p.m., and you can see on the uh, hourly hap chart that things have changed up a bit. So I'm now monitoring up the east coast in the Hunter Valley. And as you can see, the dark green has now sort of reached that area, which is 8 megahertz. So I'll just flick over to the SDR in Hunter Valley. So now, 5 watts QRP on the Centerfed full wave. And she's peeking over the 9 uh, up there in the Hunter Valley. So I'll just give this a few moments, then I'll flick down to um, South Australia, VK5. So I'd say S9. She's probably not going over at the moment. Right, and it's glitching. So I'll jump out of this one. Whoops. But it's doing very nicely up to the hunter. So um, this is going a little bit slow, just bear with me. So, you know, oops, the, so the hunter is up here on the east coast, and, oops, now I'll jump over, oops, to uh, one of these in, my uh, device is uh, playing silly buggers, uh, I'll jump up into VK5 now, conditions should have shifted across reasonably by now, although it's not favouring that direction, this antenna. So an S8 solid, maybe nearly S9. I'll give it a little, another cycle. Yeah, seven now. Is she gonna come up? Oh, she's taking a dive. Alright, one more cycle since she's my baby. <laughs> Alright, she's peeking over the S7 again. Peeking the S8 there. So, maybe within the hour we'll swing up and start peeking over the S9. But uh, yeah, it's getting very close to an S9 there. So, yeah, that's pretty good considering that's off the side. And, uh, so... What you'll find interesting is I'll jump back to Ararat now, and if you're not really used to HF, you'll see why you know, HF is so strange. So it was cranking into Ararat before, but things have changed now. So now across to Ararat in central western Victoria, you'll find that it's not so good. Look at that. Noise has picked up there, though. But yeah, she's definitely down. 
It might be an S6, but the noise is terrible. Now I'll jump out of there, and let's try now. Let's see. I don't know. I honestly don't know, but we'll try Brisbane in Queensland and see if it's now making it there. What? Why does my thing keep glitching like this? Um, so over to Brisbane, and we'll just see if it's making it. I honestly don't know how well it's doing. Alright, about an S5, S4. So S5, that's fine. But that's fair when you look at the... Uh, for Brisbane, that's in the green area, which is still up at 10 megahertz as the optimum for that uh, part of the spectrum. So there you go. That's um, very, very interesting indeed. I'll jump back once more to... Um, VK5 Ah, oh, she's down at S7 now and We've got some nice static crashes Ah, oh, yeah, S8 Getting close to S9 And one jump back now to the Hunter Valley let me see, come on device, work for me. So all the way up here into the Hunter Valley. Let's hope I can get in without a queue. Oops, I'm not on the right frequency. Why does it do this to me? I've already been here. Alright, let's see. It's, this one's really glitchy. It gives me trouble every time. Seven, one, nine, three. I don't know why. I'll just center it this way. So where, what have we got? Oh yeah, so about an S9 up to the Hunter. So there you go, QRP, she's doing quite nicely. Center fed full wave. This is glitching to severely, this SDR. I'll jump out of that, it's driving me nuts. So, uh, 7-3, and thanks for watching.